Hi, everyone. Welcome to the timingresearch.com crowd forecast news uh, for uh, this is episode number 332. And re we're recording this at a special uh, date and time uh, since yesterday was a market holiday. Um, we are recording this on Tuesday, February 22nd at 11 a.m. Eastern time. And today I have arranged for Wally Alipade to join us, and you should be seeing his screen right now. And uh, the option professor is back to moderate. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to him. Okay, great. Thank you, David. And welcome everybody to a very wild Monday morning. Huh? Uh, we're gonna go over a lot of different stuff here today, uh, but we're gonna start out by introducing Wally and uh, right side trading. <clears throat> for people who are not familiar, because Wally's been with us many times, but for those who are not familiar, Wally, a little background on yourself and what's going on at Right uh, Side Trading. Absolutely. Well, first and foremost, thank you once again for having me on. Always enjoy the time being with you guys. Uh, but yeah, I um, started trading back in 2012. I wanted to get involved in the stock market um, after the financial collapse in 2008. Prior to that, I was um, in real estate. And so when the sub mortgage crisis happened, I lost everything. And I realized that there were people who made money from the stock market when it went down. So needless to say, I wanted to learn about the stock market. So then I came in and one of the first things I wanted to understand is how to tell when the market is going down. Uh, but as time went on, I also realized that I wanted to understand when to tell if a market has hit bottom. I wanted to know how to anticipate things going on on the right side. Um, and so long story short, I dove into technical analysis a lot because I had a background in accounting and finance. And so I knew the fundamental financial analysis part but I wanted to understand the correlation between what you see on the balance sheet and the income statement, cash flow statements, and how does that you know, translate on the charts? And so um, technical analysis allowed me to be able to do that. And um, I also use what is called quantitative analysis too as well. And since then, I have been using that to help me anticipate what would happen in the markets. And so that's what we call ourselves right side trading because the whole thing we try to do is anticipate what's gonna happen on the right side of the chart. Um, and so uh, the better we got at this, the less we relied on um, news or any other fundamental analysis that we used to use in the past mm -hmm. and strictly just focus on technical and quantitative analysis now. So that's what we do. There seems to be a, a disconnect between uh, technical and quantitative right now because I hear like <clears throat> the guys from JP Morgan that are quants and I guess this Tom Lee's kind of a quant and uh, they're very, very bullish. And uh, the charts obviously are not very bullish right now. So that's correct. Do you find there is a little bit of a conflict uh, between the two right now? Yes, there's always a overlap or overlay, I should say, you know, eventually they'll merge and start going in the same direction again. But you're absolutely right right now. Um, everything from the technical perspective tells us that we are bearish. Uh, quantitative, not quite yet. You know, uh, I even told my subscribers, I said, look, uh, I have to go by what I'm seeing on the chart, which is telling us that it's bearish for now. Yeah. But we need to wait till probably the first week in March to kind of get a full picture of if this is really going to go down or not. And so we are cautious at this point. Um, we're cautiously bearish, I should say. Yeah. Uh, is what we are right now. Yeah. Well, let's go through some of our standard <clears throat> questions for a Monday, even though it is a Tuesday. <clears throat> and where do you think the market will be on the S&P on Friday? And <laughs> we're going to use our starting point today, which really is a starting point that uh, has been violated on both sides. But uh, the starting point uh, was 4332 on SPX, which is the cash uh, market for standard and poor 500. So sure. uh, using 43.32 as our uh, starting point, uh, where will we be on Friday? So the way I see this, uh, by Friday, we should be lower. Um, we should be lower based on what the charts are showing, technical analysis. Um, I, I would be surprised if we hire, let's put it that way. Uh, now, I do understand that I have to throw this out there. And that is the fact that, you know, this whole situation with Russia and Ukraine, right? Mm -hmm. So depending on the news on that, that could cause market to spike up and down and all that kind of stuff. But absent of that, um, I would say market should be lower, definitely yeah. by Friday. And uh, your uh, confidence level on a percentage basis? 
I would say 90%. I'm oh, okay. 90% confident that the market will be lower this week. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, when the only thing you can say good about something is is that uh, um, the um, sentiment indicators like put to call ratio and VIX are very high, which sometimes correlates to a, a good buying price. That's uh, pretty much the only thing you can say because the earnings are coming out fantastic. You know, we got them from Ho Home Depot today and sure. Macy's, and uh, these guys, um, you know, did great, but I guess the margins are getting tight uh, tighter at some of these companies. You know what I mean? because their cost of goods has uh, gone up. So their profit margins were pinched. I think at Home Depot, that was the problem there. Yeah, very interesting that you say that. And uh, this is one of those things that I try to tell people. Sometimes uh, we have to look at the fact that, okay, you have good earnings um, and the stock market and, 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 and the investors are not confident about it, right? And so they drive the price even lower. So then that just tells, and it's not just Home Depot. I mean, there's a lot of companies that had good earnings that came out, but I mean, most market. of them, to be honest, most of them have all beaten, but their stocks have gotten beaten. So it was a beat on earnings and beat my stock, you know? <laughs> I like that thing. <laughs> so, so that tells me, then this is what I was literally telling some of my subscribers the other day. I said, okay, guys, we got to like, you know, I, I've learned this when I first started learning. They say, look, if good news comes out and the market goes down, go with what's happening, okay? And if bad news comes out, the bar market goes up, then go with the fact that the market is going up. And so here we are, we have a good news based on these earnings, but the market keeps on going down. That tells me there's something bigger going on that we should be aware of. And right now the chart is proving that, you know, bearish side is where we need to be on. Well, the Fed is, um, you know, going to be draining that balance sheet more than people realize probably because they're not going to hike, you know, a half a point, half a point, half a point, but they can stop buying mortgages, which should probably affect real estate. Mm -hmm. And they are going to remove liquidity from the system, which should yeah. tighten monetary conditions. When you tighten monetary conditions like that, you know, the valuations of a stock definitely are affected. Absolutely. And so maybe it's a situation where these companies are just going to be at lower PE ratios than they were. And ergo, that's why they're dropping. Because, you know, I'm looking at a stock like uh, Home Depot, which is down about 25% this year um, from their highs. Mm -hmm. And um, that's a company that uh, uh, every time they announce, they're always making a lot of money. But so how could you explain? I think one explanation of stocks are dropping despite the fact that uh, earnings are up because the valuations are going to tighten because the Fed is tightening monetary conditions. Make sense? I, I totally agree with that. Um, a, a matter of fact, um, when I had a lot of people contact me, emailing me and asking, hey, what's, is, it, uh, is the market going down because of the war? And I said, okay, yeah, I know that that's something we should be looking at, but truthfully speaking, I think it's the tightening of the, what the feds are doing because I think this war thing that we're hearing about is just recent. But like you said, the market has been going down for like almost three, four months now since December, right? Some of them as early as November. And so my guess is that, you know, they know that the tightening of money is going to be happening. They see that coming. And so they are readjusting the valuation of these companies is pretty much what I see taking place. And so, um, yes, I, I agree that, you know, PE ratios have to come down, which is not a bad thing, to be quite honest. It's just we have to- For the really longer term, because it'll give you some upside. Exactly. And now for what we do, yes, that's that's not, a, I mean, we just sit in back and burn, baby, burn is what we're yeah. saying right now, right? Yeah. Because our goal is to be able to get these at cheaper values. Um, right. The question is, when are they going to say, okay, we've got a good enough discount in the market and we're ready to start heading back up. And that's what technical analysis will then guide us at that point. But whenever that time comes, oh my goodness, it'll, it'll be time to be in the market. Uh, what, yeah. what we don't want people doing is saying, Kind of like how they did in March of 2020. Oh, I wish I caught that bottom in March 2020. You know, everything has to come down in order for us to get good valuations and good discounted stocks. And that's what's happening right now. Yeah. With regards to levels, you know, um, my feeling has been um, that we've had the first level of reversion to the mean when we went down towards 4,400. The next level down is 38 and 3,600. Now, if you're holding Home Depot and you had a million dollars of it a month or two ago, and now it's at 700 grand or 750 grand, you know, you probably at some point, you know, may say, uh, you know, get me out. And if, if everyone hits that button, that might get us to that uh, blow off level at the, at the lower end. Is it possible? 
Yeah, I, I believe so. I, I definitely believe so. Yeah. To me, my target is somewhere around here at the 300 level. Um, Cause again, and just, just using strictly technical analysis, um, you have to expect it to come down here. Now, prior to that, we were probably looking at this level right here. Now that it's broken that level, you know, say, look, we have to shoot for the yeah. next sub um, uh, support levels down here. So 300, uh, 290, 290 to 300 range, without a question, um, it's not unreasonable for it to reach down that level, okay? Now, here's the other thing too. Um, part of the quantitative analysis we use is um, studying seasonality as well. And um, most people might not be aware of this, but March is usually a really good time when market bottoms just start reversing back up. Yeah, so yeah. end of February, somewhere in March. And so to see this keep on going down, and maybe not the end of February, because we are literally in the last week of February right now. Right. right? No, it'll be in Q1. Exactly. So probably in March, I will not be surprised. I, I mean, this is just me, you know, trying to take a shot into the future. But I will not be surprised that somewhere in March, we'll be somewhere down here. And we start seeing that reversal. And it's like everything just comes together. The moon, the stars, and the sun all line up together. Yeah. For this rally to start taking place. So it's definitely an area to be watching, especially in the coming month. Uh, any fundamental or technical things you want to throw out there that you're kind of looking at um, to kind of give you some hint on uh, what's going on? So, so the first thing I would say is let's go back to the S&P 500, uh, the SPX itself. And to me, I believe that there's still more downside action in and if I can draw on here, here's, here's my concern and why I look at this and say, you know, something bigger is taking place that, we, that makes us want to stay bearish. Uh, the classic definition of an uptrend is higher highs, higher lows. And that's a very classic definition of uptrends, right? And if you look from when we have this bottom in March of 2020, we've had higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. You know, we can look at it this, this way, right? But now for the very first time, we are now making lower lows. Does that make sense? And oh so yeah, it makes me, a lot of sense to me. This now has turned. I mean, this is, this is the market now turning from an uptrend to a downtrend. So we've had, and then here's the thing too, like in this lows that we made, what we see is we've had a lower high, uh, low, uh, lower low, lower high. And then now it seems like we're about to go here and take out the mm -hmm. lower low. So to me, I look at this and say, wow, if we take out this low that we set back in December, I believe is when we set this or January, I can't remember, whatever this low was right here, if we mm -hmm. take that out, then I would say the bigger picture tells me watch out below uh, because something major has to come up. Uh, maybe the Fed's intervening or something like that before we see this market go up. But the structure, the technical structure of the market to me is beginning to weaken. If that was, if, if that was something I would say, it's like it's beginning to weaken. And that's simply because from this weekly chart point of view, higher highs, higher lows, now we're forming a potential lower high, lower lows situation. Now, I'm not that familiar with these type of charts. I use different ones. But uh, when you have that long uh, stem at the bottom, uh, is it generally not tested? And if it is tested like it is now a little bit, does it generally get taken out? So technically it's not supposed to. It's not supposed to. So um, I recall when this actually happened and we were, um, we were, I was actually on one of your calls when on the day that this actually happened, I think it was back in January and I said, oh yeah, we, we've established a bottom, okay? Now that usually stands as a strong bottom, just as how we've seen these right here, where we have these long wicks right here, right? The stems. Wicks, that's what they're called, right? Wicks. Yeah, they call them wicks, yeah. So the idea here is it's okay to dip below it, but at the end of that candle, in this case, we're looking at a weekly chart, at the end of that week, if it was a daily chart, at the end of that day, we don't want it closing below there. So that to me would be the line in the sand, if you want to yeah. call it that. If the fact that it's down that, in this neighborhood is certainly a warning sign. It's definitely a warning sign. Now, usually, and what now if you get underneath the bottom of the wick, that's gone from warning to where you were on fire. It's on. It's a fallout at that point in time. It's a fallout. So this and is since uh, there's probably a decent amount of people who are holding on because their brokers and advisors are saying, you don't want to panic in this kind of a market. You know, uh, the next thing, you know, if you do take out that low, they're going to tell the broker, get lost and maybe get me out. Huh? 
<laughs> chances are that that's exactly what's going to happen. And even if they don't, then mm -hmm. I will feel bad for whoever decides to still hold on. Now, I know yeah. that there are people who will say, oh, I'm holding on for the next five years. I get that. Yeah. But I'm saying that your portfolio is going to suffer some damages if that happens. Yeah, and I don't know, like the majority of people <clears throat> will buy into that forever. You know what I mean? Because they do remember how they felt during March of 2020 when their assets were down 35 percent, 40 percent. You know what I mean? Yep. And again, the Fed is not I don't I mean, the Fed, you know, set up 14 agencies to buy things. Then they put nine trillion dollars on their balance sheet. Mm. I mean, if this thing starts falling this time, you know, I don't know that they're going to do that again. So that's the tricky question. <laughs> that's the tricky question, you know, because they did that in 2009, right? And it worked. And yeah. then they tried it again in 2020 and it worked. Right. right. And I remember uh, Jerome Powell back in 2020 saying that we still have a lot of arsenal in our fire, you know, in a, in a, a lot of tools in the shed. That kind exactly. Of thing. A lot of tools in the shed. So, so, and then, you know, at the time it seemed like, okay, he's just talking it's not going to be possible but then we saw it actually reverse so if i was to just go off of that say okay jerome powell was saying hey we have a lot of tools in the sheds uh, and, and we still have a lot of firepower to get this market back where we want it to be mm -hmm. and it actually worked then yeah but they don't want, i mean they don't want it to go back to the highs and the inflation stay at these levels because uh, again their whole purpose right now is uh, to bring that stuff down because you know, Biden and his old administrations, uh, you know, they're uh, melting like ice in a desert um, with this inflation because people are, you know, very much upset about it. That's the so the inflation part is the part that I would say, OK, how is this going to affect this time around? Because back when 2008 financial crisis happened, inflation was not an issue. 2020 inflation was not necessarily an issue like it is now. And no so, way. Yeah. And so in this case, we, you know, it's 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 almost like being thrown a curveball, so to speak. And so the question is, would they be able to still hold on now with them juggling another ball in the air at the same time? Uh, to be honest, uh, at this stage, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how yeah. it's going to go. But I would say this, that line in the sand that you're seeing on that screen right there, if that gets taken out this week, next week, yeah, I mean, you could accelerate to the downside. And maybe, you know, generally, if they want to bring things down, they like to bring them down fast, hit them in the stomach fast before people can really change their portfolio so they can all go into that uh, room that says, we're all in this together. And uh, I just got to hold on. You know what I mean? Because it's so much damage, you know, you can't, you don't want to sell out at the, at, at the low. You know what I mean? Very good. Very good point. I mean, so, you know. case in point is exactly what happened in 2020. I mean, that yeah. was super fast i mean you're talking about getting hit in the gut that is being hit in the gut right there right okay. and so maybe by the end of march we could be in the 36 3800 uh, uh, area and that could be the lows for the rest of the year i would love that yeah <laughs> i'll be honest you know, I, I would love that to be the case you know we'll have to wait and see but it, it's kind of like what i was telling my subscriber yesterday i said oh, well at least for now we need to be prepared for a market that's going to go lower yeah, you know, that's that's the one thing we have to be ready for. And so I don't usually short the market. Um, most people who know me know that I don't short. I'm more of a bullish person. But as of last week, but you I, raise you can raise cash and then that puts less risk in there. Yeah, yeah totally. I don't know yeah. necessarily running into bonds is the best place to go simply because, you know, I mean, come on, those extremely, extremely low interest rates that everyone bought all those bonds at, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, they're, they're starting to unwind a little bit now. You know, we could rally here because it's come down so fast and we have this geopolitical event. So, um, you know, obviously a rebound rally is certainly possibly in the cards, but, uh, you know, 160, 170 anytime soon, it's hard to create a scenario for that. Yeah, um, I'm not a big fund follower. So to be honest, I'll be lying to you if I said I knew what it would or would not do. Uh, but even when I look at this, I mean, this is a TLT. And mm -hmm. I look at this and say, you know, it's, it seems like the same thing is happening where uh, price seemed like it was ready to go higher. And now it's doing the opposite. Now, you know, we had up, down, up, down. Now we're going this way, you know? Yeah. So again, it seems like if we take this out, um, is it really where we want to be uh, based on this churn? I'm like, 
I would then, you know, this is well, this is a good example, uh, Wally, of why the 60-40 portfolio where you go 60 stocks, 40 bonds or 50-50 or whatever you do, you're getting whacked on both sides here. <laughs> I, I totally agree with you. And I so, tell people that, too. I say, yes, I under, maybe it worked in the past, but times have changed now. You know, and we I mean, all we have to do is just look at this right here. And say, OK, if it is supposed to be the hedge or the inverse, so to speak. That's not what's happening here. I mean, the market's going down. This is going down. You know, gold is the other one that a lot of people talk about, too, saying, OK, yeah, put your money in gold. At least gold is beginning to rally. Right. And so I look at gold and it's like, wow, um, OK, should it be the place where we start running to? Um, a lot of the articles I've been hearing about was about, you know, gold is rallying because of what's going on right now. So, I think, uh, you know, I've been in the gold for a long time and I'll tell you, um, the gold should on its surface be substantially higher because in history, when you have inflation at these rates mm -hmm. and you have interest at those rates, gold goes through the roof because again, you know, you are uh, paying nothing yep. and the money you give back is buying nothing. So the bottom line is that's the exact environment where gold would run. Now, in this case, it's starting to go. I think yep. if it starts getting 1900, 1950, 2000, it could have a very big move. But the point being is, is that they're still in their back of their mind thinking the Fed is going to bring this thing down. Yeah. And so I think there's still some hesitancy in it. But clearly on a, on a just a, a cost of money and uh, price inflation, I mean, um, and the fact that it's really, you know, it hasn't done anything in a year. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at everything else. Has oil gone through the roof? Yes. Have soybeans gone through the roof? Yes. Did stocks go through the roof? Yes. Did the bonds actually have a big rally at one point? Yes. yes. This stuff hasn't made a move. So it's not overbought. It's not excessively priced. Exactly. And it, and it, and it also had suffered from this phenomenon that all of a sudden this digital currency was the mm -hmm. new gold. Yep, and we're finding the digital digital currency is pretty much linked to the S and P. It is. <laughs> That's the other. Has thing nothing that, to do. Has nothing to do nothing with to the do with store of value. It has everything to do with the you know transacting money. Yes, yes, it, yes. It's actually more of a of a currency slash liquidity thing. And if you have a huge liquidity like the Fed provided, this thing will go through the roof as it did. But yep. if you hear that the Fed's draining their balance sheet and uh, and uh, the stimulus checks are no longer going out and et cetera, et cetera, this thing seems to react more to that than to anything else. I, I completely agree. I remember when I was hearing all that, oh, Bitcoin is a new gold and all that kind of stuff. And it's like you said, I mean, just as much as the market has been going down since January, February, Bitcoin has been doing the same thing too. You know, so definitely I don't see this at all. I think it's, it almost seems as like Bitcoin follows what the market does at the end of the day, you know? And does and, it seem like it's a situation where it's really a substitute uh, transfer of payments for uh, countries that have lousy currencies and lousy wow. liquidity. And basically it's a device that's really tailored towards that as opposed to any kind of an inflation hedge. You know, I, I would almost want to say that, but here's the thing. Um, you know, I also realized that yes, it's the countries that are for lack of better terms, poorer. And a lot which, of them. Yeah, that are switching to this crypto, you know, so. Yeah. They switch it to crypto in the hopes that maybe, you know, it's almost as if they can have an edge, they can kind of cheat the system. But you will notice that all the bigger company, uh, bigger countries are saying we don't want cryptocurrency or at least we don't want Bitcoin uh, here. And, you know, Russia, China, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if America comes out with own laws to, you know, demon certain aspects of cryptocurrencies illegal and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Because countries that are doing phenomenally well are not going to devalue their valuation of their company well if they have a halfway stable currency they don't exactly. need to replace they don't need to replace their they currency with a digital currency they don't and so what you will find is the, the the poorer countries are the ones trying to switch to cryptos and to me i'm like i don't know if that's going to really last and we'll, we'll see i mean i can't predict the future but i'm not uh convinced yet uh, i'll yeah. put it that way i personally am not convinced yet you know i've had a lot of people trying to convince me oh it's the way to go I would say cryptocurrency is not going away. That I understand. But to say but, that. But, uh, but uh, you know, anything that goes from uh, 5,000 to 70,000 back down to 30,000 is certainly not a, a stable store of anything. Not, it's not where I want to be. And people get on me all the time. Oh, you, should, you, should, you could have made a lot of money. I said, it's, it's, too, it's too volatile. It's not what I want. It's just not yeah. where I want to be. 
you know. And like I say, if you didn't sell, you know, you you, you know, you're right back to a half price again. I know. <laughs> Not yeah. to make fun of anybody, but I remember all these Shiba Inu um, uh, warriors or army that were screaming, you know, Shiba Inu, Shiba Inu, let's start. Yeah. And it's like now they're back to where they were again, you know. So that's just what happens, you know. It's a fad for some cryptos. I get that. Others are legitimate, but to me, I'll give it a little bit more time. You know? There's a lot of volatility though, so I guess that would attract money that wants to try to speculate. That's for sure, because sure. you know, well, you can't make money without volatility, and so uh, basically, um, this has plenty of volatility, which means if you do get on the right side of it, uh, you know, you can do pretty good. The key word being on the right side of it. Yeah, that's right. There you go. <laughs> hey, I was wondering, uh, we got uh, earnings coming out this week. So let's, um, uh, if we hit some of the stocks that are coming out and we'll see if sure. uh, people might find an opportunity before they actually announce. Okay. Uh, today, today we had Home Depot we saw, but it was good news on Macy's. Hit uh, Macy's up there and, um, and yeah. show it what happens when things look better. So but the funny it holding thing was- its gains? It's still up a dollar and a half. Yeah, oh, no, it's up 38 up. cents. Yeah. yeah. Funny thing was uh, we actually shorted Macy's, okay? And we shorted Macy's uh, simply because, again, the overall market looks like it's going down and all that kind of stuff. And so they're not going to be the one-eyed man in the Valley of the Blind? I don't think so. <laughs> and that, that wick today, is that the today's action, the wick like that's that? Today. Yeah, that's today's so That's action. not a good wick, is it? That's not a good wick at I'm all. I'm not a pro at wicks, but I can tell that's not a good one. Huh? That, hey, you got that right. Look, it's, it's very simple, quite frankly. If the wick is at the top of the, of the, of the body, then that means that it's going down. If it's at the bottom, it's going up. That's, that's all it is. Okay. So when I see all these right here, you see all these wicks at the tops yeah. of this? It's like th those spells sell. Or that that shows it? somebody's Drop. fading the strength. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And if you think about it, it's like why are they fade in the strength? You know, it's like I said, well, because it's come it from higher. 12 up to 26 would be one reason, right? Okay. So exactly. So to me, as I look at this, I say, look, don't be surprised if it goes down. Yeah. And so this morning when I woke up and I saw it, it was like I was, you know, I could because I was short in Macy's, um, I was losing money. I was like, what? And I said, okay, well, all right, okay, no problem. I said, let's give it to the end of the day, see what happens. Yeah, now I'm see where they take it now. Yeah. Exactly. I'm like, okay, yeah. We well, you got consumer confidence came out today and it's uh, back at September's level. So, uh, you know, if consumers lose confidence, maybe uh, they'll drink some coffee and stop spending so much money. <laughs> I got my cup of coffee right here. <laughs> exactly. And I go to Dunkin' Donuts, which is not publicly traded anymore. So that's interesting about that. <laughs> uh, tomorrow we've got some. So let's see uh, if anything looks good for tomorrow. Uh, TJ Maxx is TJX. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> would you would you trade it on the long side uh, with a stop underneath that low? Or is that a little too aggressive? This is, to me, this would be too aggressive. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, again, we see this kind of like going that now. If we close as a green candle today, then chances are better. Okay? Yeah. Chances so where they take it home, it'd be very important to you. Yeah. So I would say maybe watch this towards the end of the day, like around 3.30 Eastern time. And if this can turn a green candle, and especially if it can close above uh, Friday's high, so somewhere above this level, somewhere anytime after 3.30 today, then yeah, chances are there's a good chance that it could gap up um, on earnings. Yeah. Uh, next one up is uh, booking.com, B-K-N-G. Wow. Now, those guys have been doing pretty good because time. everyone is acting as if uh, everyone's going to go crazy this summer. So yeah. Expedia uh, was something that I had that went way up. And I guess this thing's probably doing pretty good too, isn't it? Interesting. Yeah. I mean, this is pretty good. Um, these guys are uh, overdue for a stock split, though, huh? <laughs> they should, man, definitely. I mean, not just them. There's a number of them that should be due for a stock split. Yeah. Uh, even Tesla needs to do another stock split. But needless to say, um, if this doesn't do well, uh, this line that we have here is probably as far as I believe it will go. Okay? I got you. So I don't know if anybody can make a play out of, okay, not expecting to drop below 2450. Um you know, but I, I don't see it dropping even on earnings below that. Yeah, maybe it's a little too uh, popular because the guy from Marriott was on TV and he's talking about this summer, everyone's going to go nuts with traveling. And, you know, if uh, consumer confidence is way down, uh, that might uh, not increase travel. huh? So um, and of course, if the cost of travel is high, the cost is probably the issue because I will be, you know, I'll be honest, you know, some of these hotels are getting more costly. You know, the funny thing is airlines are probably the only thing that's cheap out there. Right yeah, now. yeah. I mean, you, you know? can get there cheap, but then you're going to have to pay. 
So as long as you bring it, uh, travel with a tent, and then <laughs> you'll have a nice trip. You'll be in the tent when you get there, but it'll be very inexpensive to get there. Very expensive, man. You better pack your own lunches when you come with you. <laughs> Right. You know? <laughs> bring your own lunch and a tent and you'll have a lovely vacation and then you have a lovely vacation out there <laughs> i was looking at turks and caicos and boy i mean uh the restaurants down there are like enormously expensive the hotels are enormously expensive but to yeah. get there out of new york it's 75 dollars. look at that so th <laughs> for 75 bucks they get you on this island but boy if you want to eat or sleep anywhere you're gonna bring money <laughs> Turks and Caicos. <laughs> you, you'll be coming back without no shirt and shoes, man. <laughs> exactly. Uh, all right. So the next guy up uh, for tomorrow. Oh, this is one that I really like. If if we're going to get a travel change, let's see what it looks like. Hertz, HTZ. Ooh, HTZ. Yeah, these guys, you know, have a ton of, uh, but it's a, it looks like dead money. Honestly, I to me, I wash my hands clean off of Hertz. Yeah. Uh, if you started seeing 22, you might jump on a train huh? maybe yes um which is this right here yeah like the, the 22 maybe then but you see this is again this whole if you look at the technical structure of this it's a weak tell people it's weak you know lower yeah. highs lower lows that's what we've yeah. seen here so you if you know, take so out 22 that would change the game that would change the game and Thank if you. we're going into the summer and because uh, these guys own thrifty and they own um a um, couple of other ones yeah. um uh, dollar rent a car so i think they have more rent a cars than anyone interesting so i, I mean if the rent a car thing and so you I, think you know, like even, travel, even with all the bankruptcy they money. went through the last time that they, they didn't file for bankruptcy they still have more cars than everybody else yeah be, well because what do you call it they um they did a refi when interest rates were low you know i got you yeah, okay. that's how, to be honest with you, that's how they bailed out corporate America. They brought interest rates down to zero almost on these corporate bonds. <clears throat> Carnival Cruise and these other people, because the market was hot, uh -huh. you know, sold these bonds to people because they would buy anything that had a yield. And so they were able to refinance at these ridiculously low rates and put the little air in their tank, you know? Interesting. <clears throat> um, let's see what else we got uh, for tomorrow. Um, RGR, I'm not familiar from exactly. Who RGR? That RGR, who's that one? Yeah, who's that? <clears throat> Reg Regis Resources? Let's see. Uh, I have Strum, Roger, and Company. Never heard of them before. There was a few I had picked up from other sources. Is it RGA? Are you talking about RGA? I thought I, I wrote RGR. Like Reinsurance Group of America? Um, let's go to BBW. Okay. So build a beer build a beer workshop no that wasn't it all right let's switch to thursday and uh, let's go to uh baba on thursday baba mm. that's interesting Oof. okay so <clears throat> my take on the baba had been you know after china came out and said you know they started putting all these um restrictions on these Chinese companies that are trading in the American stock market. I mean, you can right. see how their stocks had been doing so poorly uh, since then on the monthly chart, right? <clears throat> this is big, big drops. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's all because of the sanctions, or I wouldn't say sanctions, but the limitations that the Chinese government puts on them. So I always just say, you know, until that clears up, it's just a dangerous game trying to- Do you think these high the points from back in 16 could be a support zone? Or uh, I mean, too early to tell, but would that be a neighborhood? So tech, from a technical analysis point of view, yes, that would be a support zone. Okay. Like that hundred, the hundred neighborhood? Yes, that right there. Somewhere around there, these areas would be support zones without a question. Okay. Yeah. But the problem, like I said, is, I just, you know, until I know, like, at least I will follow what China is doing with these companies. Are they allowed? Because I mean, some of them, they think that they want them to leave America completely and be listed on a Shanghai stock exchange, you know? So if this is them liquidating so they can move away from America and go like to Shanghai, then I'm saying to me, it's just one of those where I try to stay away from. Yeah. I mean, basically on right side trading, what you try to bring to the table is uh, when we're in 2019 and this thing's going up, that's the right side. Exactly. Uh, trying to buy this low and being, uh, you know, uh, using a crystal ball that is going to go to 160 out of the blue. That's not your game. That's not my game. That's not my game. That's not my game. <clears throat> it's very yeah. simple. Like 
and, and I like how you just said what you said. The whole idea is, are we, what side should we be on? Should we be bearish or should we be bullish, right? right? And so when I look at something like this, if it's not trending higher, I'm not interested in yeah. trading that because there's just too much risk at that time. I understand trying to catch the bottom, but I'll yeah. let the bottom, like I think you said this on, uh, what was it, Macy's. It's like, I let the bottom start rallying. Give me something that says, okay, yeah, you're beginning to rally up. Then, so even though if I don't get it at 120, I'm perfectly okay getting it at 180, knowing that the trend is now beginning to go higher and still capture a good, decent amount on the way higher. But when it's still falling down and there's no sign that it's reversing just yet, it's a little bit trickier game for yeah, us. Very much so. Um, with regards to um, um, Moderna, MRNA, that's uh, coming out. And yes. that's going to be a little while. <clears throat> there's actually quite a few interesting stocks here this week. Yeah, so Moderna was actually something we started uh, initiating short positions on as well, uh, simply because, again, um, one, the overall market. Two, when, um, when, when this started dropping, again, we saw, you know, this is, this is not showing any signs that it's ready to go higher just yet. Now, the interesting thing is it's at a level right here where it's like, okay, if it's going to reverse, this is where it needs to do so. So, again, like you said before, even with earnings coming up, to me, I want to see it above 180 before I do anything on, on this one. You know, my, my, my suspicion would be that, yeah, even if it gaps up, it won't last long, to be honest. I think right. there's, there's a bigger, and the reason why I say that there's a bigger situation going on here where we can see for months now, it's just been going down. Yes, we might have a short-term rally to the upside, but you see them easily fade. Um, and I believe that that has a lot to do with just the overall market as well. I mean, this thing, I mean, has tor tortured people, hasn't it? <laughs> I mean, you imagine owning this thing I was one of those, uh... every day. This is a classic <laughs> example of why you at right side have no interest in something like this. Exactly. Because, you know, the first time it dropped from 460 to 400, oh, it looks like it's going to hold that low. Yep. Then it goes down here to uh, 260 and it rallies back up. Oh, it looks like it might be going and then boom. I exactly. mean, this thing, uh, you know, uh, has really cost investors a lot of money. Yeah, it burned me back in 2020 when, you know, I got caught up in the whole, oh, yeah, you know, they came up with the vaccination. And I was like, oh, man, this makes sense. You know, they come up with a vaccination. Uh, they beginning to distribute this around the world. This should be a stock to invest in. And I'm telling you, the stock just kept on going down. I was like, what the heck? That and Pfizer. And so after that, I was like, I'm done with that, man. It's too much. Like even the charts are not reliable in this case. So, um, you know, so yeah. So to us, the only reliable thing we've been seeing recently with this stock is that it's been steadily going down. Okay. And so if it's steadily going down, uh, I'm okay with that. And you can see that right here since October of 2021. That's all it's been doing. It's just going down. Yeah. You would think they have the vaccination, they pass it out to everybody, the seniors, uh, adults, even kids now, you would think that with that, these stocks should be doing well. They are distributing this vaccination to countries and this is still happening. Tells me that it's, it's, not, it's not something I wanna be in. Well, I found one that uh, people might wanna take a look at for uh, this week, um, and these earnings come out on Thursday. It's a Monster Be Beverage. It's a uh, MT... Yeah. Is it MNST? M MNST. Okay. Now you're selling it like that because my short-term graph is actually showing a turn in it. Oh, <clears throat> this is the daily chart right here. Yeah, okay. yeah I mean, this is for a short-term trader guy. Okay. Could a short-term trader guy maybe see so, this as a bit of a turn? Yeah, based on, okay, so for short-term, for short-term, I would say based on what we've seen here, if we can, when, when is earnings coming out? Is Thursday. It, Thursday, so, okay. Tomorrow. So plenty. So, to, uh, okay, so if we can close higher, I mean, higher than Friday's candle for one, that would be a very good thing. Or two, if we get two green candles, so we have this green candle here, if we can get one more, um then yes for short term I, I won't be surprised if it pops you know um going up but what we want to see is something like this where we have two candles in a row does that make sense so yep. we see downside red 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 we had one green that's not enough you see two greens okay you have a chance for it to go higher you have a chance 
Now, because Ernest is coming up, if I see two greens, chances are higher now that, okay, we could get that pop on that Ernest. The, um, you know, it's hard to find. Most of the ones that are coming out uh, look uh, very bad. So it's hard to really find anything. Monster was like one of the only ones really showing any green. Um, what about uh, Beyond Meat? Is that a story that's come and gone? <laughs> oh, these are lovely ones. Uh, Beyond Meat. I forgot they even existed, to be honest. I know. <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a, uh, a graveyard coming out of earnings. That's what oh, I'm... my goodness. Uh, what can I say, man? You know, I, I look at this and I'll be shocked if Ernest does well, to be honest. I, I really yeah. would be shocked. I mean... I would not expect Ernest to be good on this one. Uh, that's just me. Okay. And again, it's, we can see this is very clear. Super bearish stock. Hasn't been doing anything for a while. These gaps right here are probably earnings that probably took place. It's, I mean, unless there's something that we know that they're saying is uh it's expected to be revealed on earnings day I, I don't see anything changing with the company not this earnings season at least not yet how about a pizza pzza papa john's coming out papa john's that's my kid's favorite pizza joint <laughs> papa john's <clears throat> it's hanging on for dear life huh and you see you, you see this too right it's, it's not like i'm making this up right i mean yeah. you see it too you know? yeah if no, the needs... whole market is holding on for dear life because that 4,400 that it broke on the S&P, mm -hmm. uh, that was pretty much a little bit of the, the towel being thrown in. Yeah. And now the only thing that could happen is something positive out of the blue to get everybody who's on the sell side to have to cover and may maybe get the thing to rally because a uh, month end is coming up. Who knows? Thanks. I mean, that would be, if you're grabbing for straws, that would be a straw to grab in that the um, VIX is high, the uh, put calls high. Yep. The short interest is probably pretty high. End of the month is coming. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that could be something that could turn it around. But boy, it's a dangerous game. I, I would I would totally agree with you on that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I like what you said about, you know, the, the end of month rally. You know, that does happen. OK, so yeah, it's, it's, they like they don't want the statements to go out um, as low as the low was for the month. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Exactly. Exactly. So that's a possibility. Maybe that will probably be saving grace but usually what would end up happening is once that happens then right after that it comes right back down again right and so yeah um if i look back at uh what was it beyond meat that we we're talking about yeah um oh no no what was the other one you're looking at pizza pizza yeah PZ, Papa John's. yeah, 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 Papa John. yeah um Again, the only way I would say, okay, there's a chance that it might gap up is I would like to see take up Friday's high. Like that's usually one of the things we want to do. It's like at least clear some barrier before we can say, okay, this is good. So if Ernest is coming out, if I can see it clear this right here, then maybe we'll give it a chance to say that it, it could pop on Ernest now. It could still pop on Ernest regardless of that. I'm just saying you have a better chance of it popping if we can clear this before Ernest comes out. There's a stock uh, that supposedly would be benefiting from all the used car sales, uh, cars.com, C-A-R-S. That has earnings as well. But uh, that, yeah. again, you know, yeah. it's pretty obvious. The whole board is uh, looking like it wants to oh. roll over. Huh? You know, and that's one of the things I was telling people, too. I said, look, OK, it was one thing when, let's say, GameStop, right, was was bearish and we had a bunch of people come in wall bet wall street bets and say let's let's squeeze these people out of their stock you know and they only doing it on one stock and that worked really well but like what we've seen today when we've seen the broad range i mean we've talked about technology stock we talked about retail stocks we talked about automotive you know you, you're looking across the span you know and all of them are still showing the same thing this tells me, again, there's something bigger in this market that we should be aware of. And that is that, you know, money's not flowing into the market right now. No. You know, money's not flowing into the market. VIX is up. You know, it's like, it's everything. You know, the S&P, the Dow, the NASDAQ, the Russell, the transportation index, they all showing signs of weakness. This is not just one GameStop stock or one AMC stock that is being manipulated. This is the whole market. Money is not flowing into the market for a reason. 
And I always kind of go back. I said, the only logical reason I could think, I don't think it's the war. Because again, this- Of course it's not the war. That's a diversion while the Fed does what they have to do, which is drain reserves and drain liquidity. And so while they're doing that, they'd prefer everyone to have their eyes on the Ukraine. There you go. There you go. Because if the word really gets out and if it becomes permeated throughout the nation, the Fed is taking liquidity away. They're obviously going to realize that stocks are not going to be able to go up very far in that environment. And imagine if everybody wants out. Well, you don't have to imagine. Look at March 2020. Exactly. (laughs) That's what it looks like when everybody wants out and there's no bids. And there's no bid. Let's hit a couple of things here that um, have been doing well. And uh, let's, I'm going to throw up some gold here uh, that I have uh, been very much um, involved in. Uh, GFI is uh, Goldfields. And this okay. thing, it's been nothing but uh, looking yeah, great. Look at this, man. Like, this, this is what we want to see. So if yeah, somebody pull, was to say, yeah, it, 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 might pull back. Ahead, you know, it might pull back, of course, you know, but. Say that one more time. I'm sorry. It may pull back, but, you know. It could, but I mean, look at this, man. I mean, this is, this is what I'm talking about. Okay, so I see something like this. Yes, this is a market that's going up. Yeah. Okay, I mean, we've had up, down, up, down, went sideways, and it's going up again. To me, it's like, this is, if you want to go long, go long on stocks like this. Right. Because, again, even if we switch to this weekly chart here, you know, it becomes even clearer. It's like, you know, yeah. went up, pulled back, went up. Took right, the let me get a few to... more out here for you to chew on because they're all uh, favorites sure. of mine. SPSW. SPX. SB. Uh, Sammy, Bobby, uh, Sammy, William. And Sammy, and Sammy William. William. Yep. Wonderful. Yeah. A lot of I people love... don't know these things, but I'm telling you, they're great to me. Wonderful to me, man. I will buy these type of stocks. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, what about uh, PAAS, Pan America Silver? Oh, yeah, Pan America Silver. All right. So it's catching up. Usually it follows what gold does, right? Yeah, it's lagging. So it's lagging. It's lagging yeah. so, the ones uh, in the gold are the ones uh, where the money's being made. Um, another one is uh, KGC is lagging, but maybe it'll catch up. And chances are they usually do. I yeah. mean, they usually my, do. My two favorites have been the one I just mentioned, then Newmont, NEM. Oh yeah, new Monty. Yeah. I've had that since fifty two, fifty five, and you know it's been very good. Get out of here, seriously. And this pay this pays a dividend. People always say, you know, gold doesn't pay any dividend. Well, this gold stock, when I was uh, involved at the fifty, fifty two, fifty three area, paying four uh-huh. percent dividend. Wow, four percent dividend plus it's uh, and it and it's a uh, leading in the gold. I mean, Man. I thought it was a no brainer. Yeah, I think you uh you've made me want to go in there. I might end up yeah. today after this call get on the get on the. Uh, platform and actually put on some gold trades there as well well my view, i like what i see it's the cadillac of the gold stocks i like what i see <clears throat> yeah um now how about the industrial metals though clf is cleveland cliffs i've been dying to get into these but uh, they're back and forth they're back and forth but uh, yeah, can you... let's take a look at this well, is, that a, not... is that a pullback to 18 that's, and now we're going to blow out 21 that's, what that's exactly what i see that's exactly i mean this is not bad at all i mean this is this is one of those where it seems like Part, part of what we're going to be experiencing is this is pulled back and then now it's getting ready to do one of these sets of situations. Okay. Yeah. If you want to be conservative, maybe wait till like it takes out $20, but it, another it one like that I got is a uh, valet V A L E the Brazilian deal. That looked great too. Oh man. That's, I mean, that's, that's a beautiful chart right there. That's a sexy stock right there to me. Yeah. Those are industrial metals, you know, I love Free, uh, Freeport, MacMoran, FCX, but that seems to be having some trouble in the low 40s here. But let's see if it's still. Yeah, yeah I, I noticed that about uh, FCX, but honestly, I think it's just one of those is like let it bide its time. Uh, it's going in the right direction, which is the upside. So yeah. I don't see no issues with that, to be honest. Yeah, the other ones are more uh, steel and aluminum and those kind of things, you know? Yeah. Um, and on the energy side, I like this Suncor SU. Um, you know, they're up in Canada and they're not as um, overdone as the rest. It doesn't seem if you go out to a longer term graph, like a like a five year graph or something like that, it kind of gives you an idea that maybe over time. Like this? You know, it could uh, it could go into the um, higher neighborhoods without a question. I mean, it's kind of like what you said. Again, this is very clear that the chart stone lies what I always yeah. say. We've hit the double bottom down here after it was doing this going down double bottom now is doing this right here to the upside uh definitely seems like there's more room to the upside on this one let me give you another few uh, wmb wmb yeah. uh, again 
I don't know what happened today that made it lose so much. Well, but... I think the uh, isn't the oil pretty volatile today. Uh, that's a good question. I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, it was up to 95 or something, then back down. So, you know, but um, another one, the other two I like are the uh, Slumber's ASLB. SLB. And again, if you look at it a longer term, you can see that, um, you know, yeah. there is a lot of real estate above if it's going to keep going. Without a question. You know, it's coming to that 45 or, or whatever this number is. So, right. But again, once it passes that, 50 and then next thing you know is about 70 dollars um is the next you know resistance level somewhere around here and what about so, halliburton hal i think it's pretty much in there too hal hal yeah hal yep same thing same they're, thing they're on the servicing side now would you so so here's where sometimes when i see something like this i say wow is it a situation where they are using this as defensive stocks in anticipation of what's going on with the overall market or is it a transfer from one industry sector to another right but at the end of the day um there's always a bull market somewhere and yeah yes the market is down generally but these are doing well i mean these are absolutely doing well you know, Wally, the real risk right now to me is that the, the entire board comes down and the entire board comes down because if they're uh, draining off their balance sheet and mm. they're going to hike interest rates, that's a hundred percent different environment that made these things go up. And so oil at a hundred and that's kind of stuff that might not be sustainable. Mm. And uh, the commodities are very, very high priced, you know, on yep. coffee and sugar yep. and soybeans. So is it logical that they will back off? And we've already seen that the tightening of the PE ratios is bringing stock prices down. And then the higher interest rates are being bonds down. And if the rates go up, it's going to bring real estate down. So it's very conceivable that a lot of things are going to get the air taken out of them yes. uh, in 2022 and some in a very substantial way. So having a certain amount of cash this year since January you know, cash is trash and you're going to lose money with inflation and cash. Hey, listen, I don't know if you're going to lose money on inflation, but if I had uh, a million bucks in cash or a million bucks in uh, Facebook, I'd rather have a million bucks earning nothing. In cash, exactly. <laughs> you know, because every yeah. time it goes down 20%, you got to figure that's 20% gain on your cash. You know what I mean? Exactly. Absolutely. No, absolutely. Uh, cash can, can definitely is king in a bearish market like this. And so- yeah. And, and since like it's been said. so maligned, it's been so maligned, yes, you know, any yes. investment is either put on a big pedestal or maligned tremendously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's generally a time where you got to look at the other side of the coin. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And I think that other side of the coin, too, is don't get distracted by all the what I consider distraction news, like the war kind of situation. Yeah, like the war. I mean, really, come on. Yeah. At the end of the day, you know. Is the Fed reducing their balance sheet more important than Kiev? Exactly. That's, and, that's for me, it's the key. You know, because again, people are not going to uh, change their consumer spending because someplace, you know, that far away from us is having, um, you know, exactly. a conflict. Exactly. No, now, I we totally have a little bit of time that. here. Uh, you know, I know you like to have your own picks, but, you know, in this kind of environment, I figured they'd be uh, far and few between because uh, you're, you're looking for things like, I mean, I did show some of them that I look at that I think you'd concur, particularly in the metals area. Um, but uh, there's not a whole lot that you're looking at that looks like a, some kind of an uptrending get no. on the train, is there? No, no, no. Um, the only one, honestly, is gold, you know, yeah. for us. If, if we were to go long on anything, it would be gold. At this stage, we're not even expecting the market to go higher anytime soon. Uh, so we're not even focused on that. Everything we've done right now is looking for the ones that are going to drop. Okay, so like I say, the only thing I can think of that's risky to the gold here is the fact that a uh, they are draining reserves, and that is a slowing type of a procedure. And mm -hmm. if you do slow things down, obviously the gold has a hard time staying up, like anything does. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah. But yeah, um, unfortunately, it's just a market condition, right? Yeah. And so it's not like we control it. I don't control it. You know, so uh, the only thing is, like you said, we have to figure out where is money flowing into. And right now, money's not flowing into the market. It's flowing out of the market. So cash is king. Uh, it's definitely something to keep in mind. And then um, you actually opened up my eyes to a lot of these uh, energy stocks that you were showing me here in these um, gold mining stocks and all that kind of stuff, because I wasn't even paying attention to that. 
So, and the industrial metals on industrial Cleveland metals, Cliffs is interesting too. Yeah. Yeah. You opened my eyes to that because yeah. I wasn't even paying attention to that at all. So, yeah. Um, well, the thing is, is I try to keep my periscope up and looking all directions. You know, and other than yeah. one thing we haven't talked about at all is the international markets. And some people think that uh, with Australia opening up, you know, uh, something like uh, VPL, uh, which is a Vanguard um, uh, Pacific Rim ETF. Uh-huh. Uh, okay. might be something that could turn at some point in time um, maybe having hit a low there at 72 but yeah. again that's not a, a great looking chart yeah i mean but it's you know if it's going to bounce this is where it needs to do so yeah. but yeah uh i didn't know australia was actually opening up that's good news because i know yeah. uh they've been shut down for quite some time man. two years <laughs> two years Golly. yeah <laughs> Two years, but I think you know if I, uh, if someone was kind of summating what you're kind of doing at right side right now is you know you'd rather think that this period of time is a period for cutting bait uh, prior yes. to going fishing, absolutely, and, and that's not a bad way of thinking right now. So you know you you don't want to jump into the lake because it's a little early for that, but you mm-hmm. definitely want to prepare to jump in the lake, and of course that means you're going to be cutting your bait, getting ready to go fish. Well said. Very well said. And, so I think uh, yeah, when people get a hold of you, you know, you're going to be getting them prepared for something that is not going on right now. But we all know that over time, stocks do rise. Absolutely. So this would be the time to uh, investigate, you know, which uh, shopping list you'd like to have. Absolutely. And, you know, one of the biggest things that we teach is how to identify market bottoms. I mean, that's mm-hmm. one of the biggest things I studied. Because like I said, when when the financial crisis happened in 2008, I didn't realize that the market had started rallying back onto 2013. And so in 2012, I was still thinking the market was dropping because I wasn't used to the market at the time. Right. And then I found out as a wait a second, it hit bottom in 2009. And I was like, right. what? Who, why am I just finding this out in 2012, you know, yeah. three years later? And so I decided to spend a lot of time because I said, nobody talks about a bottom as much as they talk about the bubble busting. You, you, there's so much panic about the bubble busted that they don't talk about, yep, we definitely hit the bottom. Onto yeah, the I mean, the, everyone is so panicked, they don't realize they're looking at value. Exactly. Just like when we're at, uh, you know, 420 on Moderna, they are so fixated on the greed, they don't think about <laughs> the fact that at some point the um, uh, virus will fade, we won't need these drugs, and yep. ergo their sales are going to drop, you know what I mean? Exactly. So, so yeah, so so that's that's like you said, you know, get ready. Um, we'll be waiting for when this bottom hits, mm-hmm. which we know it's going to. It's, it can't drop forever, so right. uh, it's going to hit bottom. And history shows that the longest bear market we've ever had was the Great Depression of 1929, which lasted about four years before it hit bottom. Right. right? Um, but yeah, you know, on average, anywhere from six months to eighteen months is what a typical bear market will last. The cycle guys uh, put a 20 and 40 year cycle on the market. So if you take 2022 and you take 20 years uh, off, you're at 1982, which was a very tremendously, um, um, you know, lower. I mean, a 40 year off is 1982. And that is a very low level. And then uh, if you take 20 years off, you're at 2002. That was a low level. Mm -hmm. And then if you go back to 1962, Again, that was a low level. So the bottom line is, is that this 20 and 40 year cycles are indicating that 2022 is definitely going to be a lower cycle. So that's why not losing your forest from the trees and using this drop, you know, to kind of accumulate at some point, it may make a lot of sense. I agree with you. I agree with you. And be ready. Well, we're at the top of the hour. Why don't you tell people how to get a hold of you? And then um, basically, uh, you know, um, if sure. you have any offers, this is a good time to give them. Yeah, sure. Um, absolutely. Um, RightSideTrading.com. That's the name of our company, uh, RightSideTrading.com. If you go on there, you'll find out more about what we do. Uh, let me see if I can actually bring this up here. This is our website here. Um, just go on there. You'll find out more about what we do. Just scroll down. You'll learn about what we do. If you're interested, click on this red dot right here. Uh, it'll give you more information about us. Absolutely. Okay. Sounds perfect. All right, Wally, we will be back talking to you again soon. Absolutely, uh, man. It was yeah. fun talking to you, Jim. It's always, you. We always have a great conversation. And I think people take, uh, they should be taking quite a bit out of this because we're not mainstreaming everything we say. And, you know, sure. we're not jumping on what everybody else is saying and exactly. not giving both sides of the fence a fair opportunity. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, I love but, it. But um, as far as Option Professor is concerned, if you go to optionprofessor.com, we have five PDF reports. And one of those PDF reports, I outlined some of the best stocks that we like, like some of the ones we've mentioned. So obviously, it would be very good to get that in your hands. So if you go to optionprofessor.com, put in your information, we'll explain how to get the PDF uh, reports so you can take our knowledge and experience and take advantage of some of our ideas. Um, and we look forward to hearing from you for there. So, um, Wally, I'm going to say a, a farewell and All we're right. going to throw it over to David and we'll be yes. talking soon enough. And uh, thanks a lot for being again here today. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, guys. Yeah, a ton of good info today. So uh, thanks for that conversation. And uh, just a quick reminder for everyone, be sure to subscribe to Timing Research on YouTube and your favorite podcast app. And you can also just go to timingresearch.com to uh, get access to the archive of this show as soon as I can get it posted, as well as any of the past shows and events. Uh, and I just want to thank my guests again for today, Wally Alipade of rightsidetrading.com and the option professor of optionprofessor.com. Thanks, everyone.